such a time and season we are in, in going through, going into new, coming out brand new. <laughs> Thank you, Master. I want to go to Isaiah 61, please. Isaiah 61. We want to make a proclamation according to the word. Regardless of where you've been, what you've done, today is brand new. Amen. Thank God his mercies are new every morning. We'd all be in trouble. everybody there? Yeah. We're going to speak this because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. And as a man thinks, so he is. Let's speak it. Verse 1. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to console those who mourn in Zion, and to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be what? Glorified. Turn your neighbor and tell him you're a tree of righteousness. Verse 4. And they shall what? Rebuild the old ruins. They shall raise up the former desolations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the desolations of many generations. Strangers shall stand and feed your flock, and the sons of the foreigner shall be your plowmen. And your vine dressers. But you shall be named the what? Priests of the Lord. They shall call you the servants of our God. What an honor. They shall, you shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. That means things are getting ready to get turned over. And in their glory you shall boast. Instead of your shame you shall have double honor. Instead of confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore, in their land they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery for burnt offering. I will direct their work in truth. I will make with them an everlasting covenant. Their descendants shall be known among the Gentiles and their offspring among the people. All who see them shall acknowledge them that they are the prosperity whom the Lord has blessed. How many of y'all want to be the prosperity the Lord has blessed? Amen. Amen. So, Father, we decree this in the mighty name of Jesus. We speak it because we believe it, we accept it, and we execute it in Jesus' mighty name. This is spoken for each and every child of God. Everyone. But see, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy Again, one of the first things he wants to always steal is your identity. Amen. To steal your identity or who you are in Christ. So many times he reminds us and brings guilt and shame and condemnation. When the Lord says, I've forgiven you. But the enemy doesn't forget. God does. <laughs> and we have a tendency to not forget sometimes either. Hello. So we need to not only forgive ourselves, but forgive those that have hurt us in any way whatsoever. You know, remember, people get offended very easily. And the reason for offense is because they're still trying to protect themselves. It doesn't say offense won't come. It will come. Amen. Amen. Not that we welcome it. Hello. Some people look to be offended just so they can grumble and complain. Because they got to feed that demon that's in them. Hello. 
Same thing with addiction. That spirit comes back and it wants to get fed. And it sometimes is open the door. The addiction doesn't start right away. It's usually caused by a first comes offense. Then it manifests and it gets stronger and stronger. And then there's eventually unforgiveness, bitterness, envy, jealousy, rage, whatever it may be. And, and it opens the door and a person who was addicted goes back to it. Because addiction is also a spirit. If he can see that he can get fed again, he slips back in. Remember, demons get fed by emotion. Amen. Does everybody get this? So there's, a, there's, there's an area where we're going to today because, of, and it's something that needs to be refreshed in our spirit. And personally, I thought we've always had a teaching on this, but apparently, I, mean, I looked it up this morning, and I guess sometimes things need to be plain and simple. It's called the God of this age. Amen. The God of this age. So many people don't even know who the God of this age is. There's a God of eternity, but there is a God of this age. Has everybody got it? There's a God of the age of grace for me and you. But there's also a ruler of this world. His name is Satan in this kingdom. And he's known as the God of this age. It doesn't make him God. It makes him ruler of this age. Has everybody got it? Because there's only one God and his name is Jesus. <laughs> in Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12. My hope is that many uh, backsliders or unbelievers and even believers will not only be, be, be fret, refreshed today, but understanding would come. Because understanding needs to come. Because without understanding, God's people go astray. You know, you know, you may know somebody that knows the Bible and knows the word. But the word says that they go astray, and when they go astray, they go into affliction. And that's self-affliction. Remember, the enemy is looking for any loophole he can access, me and you. He's like a high-powered attorney, prosecutor. Amen? He's trying to prosecute you, trying to accuse you. And Revelation 12, verse 7, let's speak it together. The first two words out of this was powerful. And war was, and war what? Broke out, Broke out in heaven. What's happening? War. Amen. I think people forget that they're in a war. There's a war going on and it's not stopped and it isn't going to stop until you and I leave this place and Jesus comes. It's going to continue. And I think people forget that. They get, begin to get compromised, complacency, get lazy and lose sight of the war. They begin to think everything's okay because they've been don't even realize that they're misled and they're now fulfilling their life instead of his. Amen. Amen. And so there is a war going out. It's constant every single day. It hasn't stopped and it's not going to stop until Jesus comes and kicks butt. Verse 7, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. And this is the third dimension, the, the third heaven. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of old, called the what? The devil, Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Does everybody see it? This is called the kingdom of Satan. Satan, who is a high-ranking angel, he was God's right-hand man at one time. He was one of the first angels created. He can outwit anyone. He saw everything created. In fact, God created him before he created all matter. So he got to see everything established. He knows all physics. He knows all the formulas. He knows all the genetics. He knows all of these things. He's an engineer in his own self because he saw it be created. Does everybody get it? That's why it says that he is the most cunning beast. It says that the Lord gave him wisdom and beauty, and he defiled it. He lost that wisdom and beauty. He became a beast. God took his beauty away. But he still has the power. 
because he's an angel. He has very much power. And in that power, he can cloak himself with light, even though he's ugly inside. He made himself beautiful in the garden and deceived Eve, seduced her and produced offsprings because she was attracted to the light and the beauty. See, there's a lot of false light out there. It says that the angel comes as an angel, Satan comes as an angel of light. Amen? And when we see he's called a dragon, he's called a devil, he's called uh, a serpent, he's called the Satan, he's called all of these, he's a shapeshifter. He can change himself. Sometimes you're talking to the devil and you don't even know it. <laughs> Verse 10. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. So what was he saying? He said, look at man. Here it is, real simple. This world is ruled by Satan's kingdom. Fallen angels, Lucifer himself, with all power. But I'm telling you, God made a way out. He sent the power of his Christ called the anointing, the anointed one and his anointing. Amen. The eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty came in the body of Jesus Christ for me and you. It was the only way that we could overcome. The only way. And it says, and for the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb by the word of their testimony, and they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. <laughs> Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you, having what? Great wrath, because he knows it is a short time. A what? Short time. So again, there's a place and position where you and I must walk in. It's called divine positioning. That's why the Lord said, you know, salvation is not the, uh, the end of everything. It is the beginning. When you and I are saved, the next step is to be filled and empowered with the Holy Spirit, the Christ, so that we can overcome. In fact, even Jesus didn't go out and fight the devil until the Spirit of the Lord came upon him, right? And it's amazing now how many people are trying to fight the devil and they're losing. In fact, many people don't even fight the devil. They get caught up in religion. 1 Corinthians, no, 2 Corinthians, chapter 4. Jesus said he came to disarm Satan. He said the ruler of this world is being cast out. In other words, because Jesus disarmed him. But to the world, he's still harmful. For me and you are walking in Christ. He can't touch you Amen. unless you let him. Amen. So he does everything that he can to deceive you so he can touch you. Amen. I love what Jesus said. So the rule of this world is coming, but he ain't got nothing in me. Amen. Snap. <laughs> Second Corinthians chapter 4, is everybody there? Verse 1. Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we receive mercy, we do not what? Lose heart. Lose heart. Don't give up. Amen. Fight. Don't be a wimp. Amen? Amen. Verse 2. But we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. In other words, you're always keeping the Lord before you. He never, you, you, you never lose sight of him. He's always before you. Verse 3. But even if our gospel, now the gospel is a message of truth. Amen? Is veiled, blinded. 
it is veiled to those who are what? They're perishing. They're perishing. Whose minds the what? God of this age has blinded. Who's the God of this age? Satan. Who do not believe, who do not follow. Lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. Come on, let's keep going. I like this. Verse 5. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake. It is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. See, this may sound strange to you, but the face of Christ is in you. <laughs> and his glory is on his face. So when the devil sees you, he sees Jesus. He sees Jesus in you. He don't see you. He either sees his child, the fallen one. A demon sees his brother, the fallen one. Or he sees the new creation, Christ, in me and you. Whatever you're allowing to lead you. Amen. That's why the word says, submit to God and resist the devil. Because you still have the old man. Amen. The old man is still there. But he needs to be crucified if, he's led, if you're led by the Spirit. In verse 7. For we have this treasure in what? Earthen vessels. Come on, read it with me. That the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. That's where we just talked about in Revelation. The power of Christ has come to dwell where? In me and you. In the glory of God in the face of Jesus, which is in our hearts. So again... When you're really filled with the Spirit of God, the enemy sees the face of Jesus. And the power may be of God and not of us. We are what? Hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. Whoa. Does everybody get it? So that he may be manifested. That means you and I are on a, we are on a mission of death to self and life to Christ. It's constant. It doesn't, it's not one. See, the battle that's always coming against me and you is to keep, the enemy's trying to keep your old man in position. And the fight is for you and I to keep the old man behind us. That's why Jesus said, get behind me, devil. Oh, glory. The God of this age blinds. He blinds by perverting, preventing people to understand the eternal truth. He tries to prevent individuals from knowing truth and preventing them from maintaining or getting their identity. Removing truth is his objective to me and you. That's what he's trying to do. His objective is, for those who are born again, is constantly to exchange truth with deception and lie. It's a fight constantly. That's why you must always maintain and refresh yourself with truth all the time. Amen? You know, one of the things he likes to do is keep us in a... This may sound a little strange, a little dumb, dumb and stupid position. Amen? A stupor, like. He tries to put us to sleep to get us to fall into laziness and compromise so that we're not in that battle any longer. Because if you're not in a battle, you become a casualty. It's actually a, a state of being called a fool state. Everyone say fool state. It's a state of being called a fool. So many spiritual people have fallen into that state. They need to be awakened or reawakened because they've been taken captive by foolishness. 
Now, he, Satan is not only the god of this world, but of this age, he is also the ruler of this world. He is also known as the god of self. He's the god of what? Self. He's the god of deception. He's the god of lust. He's the god of lies. He's the God of money. He's the God of death. He's the God of murder. And he's the God of fools. He leads them into the fool's paradise with control and bondage. Everybody okay? First hmm. Corinthians chapter one. In verse eighteen. Is everybody there? Let's speak it, please. For the message of the cross is what? Foolishness to those who are what? Perishing. But to us who are being saved, it is the what? Power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. So we, listen, see, there's a wisdom and understanding of the world that is totally different than the wisdom and understanding of the eternal realm. What does he say here in verse 20? Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this age? Has not God made foolishness the wisdom of this world? For since the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom, did not know God, it, ple it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For Jews request a sign, Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified to the Jews a stumbling block and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because of the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brother, that not many wise according to the flesh, not many muddy, not many noble are called. But he has chosen to what? Foolish. You and I were once... Under the God of this age, the God of fools. We were fools. We were deceived. We were misled. Amen? But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put to shame the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty. And the base things of the world and the things which are despised, God has chosen. And the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, that no flesh shall glory <laughs> in his presence. But of him you are in Christ. Everyone say, I'm in Christ. Who became for us wisdom from God and righteousness and sanctification and redemption that is written, he who glories let him glory in the Lord. He who glories, let him glory in the Lord. Powerful. Fools, foolishness. People that are misled, deceived. This is what, what a fool represents. When we become taken by deception, we become a fool. It's simply simple. We become such in a simple state, in a, in a stupor. We become easily tricked. There's other deeper uh, words for fools. How about idiot? Moron. So forth. It all leads to the same thing, to deception caused by lack of understanding. Has everybody got it? That's a deeper state of being a, a fool. We become idiots and morons. Listen, this state of being of, in a fool's place only way out is through the anointing of Christ Jesus. But it takes obedience. Cooperation is essential. Without cooperation, there's no way out. You'll stay a fool all the days of your life. That's why the Lord says, repent and turn from your ways. Amen? 
The deception is caused by lack of understanding, which can only come by the Spirit of the living God. He's the only one, by the Holy Spirit, the anointing that can bring me and you an understanding. That's why it's important to get into his presence all the time. Amen? Because in his presence, everything is. He, in his presence, when you have him, you have everything. There's an exchange being made as you're worshiping the Lord. Amen. Our stupidness for his wisdom. Amen? Amen? All of a sudden, things become a light. Somebody turned the light on. Whoa. Where have I been? And all of a sudden, there's a reality that comes of his love for you. Man, he loves me. Why would I want to do anything else but follow him? How stupid can I be and still breathe? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> So we see in this that only through the spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit, and fellowship and relationship can we be let out. But many people, they exchange. They take, they, they, you know, look at how much the world is being deceived in many ways. They're, they're promised fool's paradise. It's fool's paradise. Remember, he's the God of this world. He's a God of money. He tricks. What does it say? The love of money is the root of all evil. Become, people become easily tricked and fooled, whatever it may be. Lust and every other thing associated with it. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, remember, lust is nothing more than an overwhelming desire, isn't it? So can, is addiction lust? Yes. The world can only go after the fruit. That's all they know. But you and I are supposed to go at the root. That's why we're called to uproot things. We're to throw down and uproot. That's why there's a battle going on. Second Thessalonians, chapter 2 and verse 5. Let's speak it together. The God of this age. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of what? Lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And who's he? We. The presence of God. The body of Christ. When you and I are taken out of the way, there will be no more restraints. All hell will break out. And the next event is called the rapture. Fulfilling the feast of trumpets. And you don't want to be here. You want to make sure you get the first bus out. So don't lose your bus ticket. In verse 8. And then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will eventually consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of who? Satan. You know many people still don't believe that there's a devil or that there's Satan? They don't, they don't ah, there's no. Until they give up their last breath and see the demons coming to get them. Then it's too late. You know, there's not one unbeliever in hell. Amen. Everyone that's there believes. But it's too late. Hmm. So the coming in the lawless ones according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. With all unrighteous deception among those who what? perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved because they did not love truth listen this is very vital if you don't love truth you won't follow and truth is just not something written it's the person see jesus looks at me and you and says if you don't love me you don't love truth see that means that the love of truth is not a priority. It must always be first-hand priority. Truth must always be before you because he is the person of truth. That's why David said, I always see the Lord before me. Truth must always be before you, always. Or you won't have anything to compare with. You'll be easily deceived and become a fool. And deception is tremendously great right now. Tremendously. People are being misled in all kinds of areas. Chasing after their lives. 
trying to restore what the enemy stole. You can't. He'll just steal it again if you get in that position. God are the only ones that can restore it. He's the only one. He is our source. Everything else is a resource. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? And verse 11. Would you read it with me? For this reason, God will send them what? Strong delusion. He'll let them get more stupid. He'll, he'll allow it. Because why? They're not willing to love truth. They're not willing to follow him. So he said, okay, go ahead. Go for it. Sometimes you just got to let a person run the course, man. Hopefully they hit the wall of reality before they die. For this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they might believe the lie. God's going to allow them to believe the lie. Because they refuse to love the truth. Wow. That they may be what? Condemned. Who do not believe the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. They have pleasure in what? Unrighteousness. Wow. They did not love the truth. Great deception. Creating more fools. And we're seeing it now. Man, you watch the news. There's a bunch of fools out there. And most of them are newscasters. We are in the age of fools, but also the age of awakening. Lawlessness. What is lawlessness? People don't even, some people don't even know what lawlessness is. It is the breaking or violation of God's word, or what we call law, because his law is word and his word is law. It is breaking or the violation of God's word, law, or what we might call desires. Hmm. It's when the, uh, and the, there's a transgression or what we call a neglect of becoming unrestrained from his word, his commands, and his will. Does everybody get this? Amen. So what happens is we neglect things. We become complacent. We become compromising. We don't, we're not keeping the love of truth. We're not holding on to it. See, we got to hold on to it both hands. Many people are walking around with one hand on truth and the other hand on deception. That's serving two masters. And the devil will eventually take you out. Amen. Galatians chapter 1. God of this age. Many people. Many people. Uh, oh, hallelujah. Have been taken captive. Many. Many are falling astray. And many are awakening. But many believers are backsliding and falling astray. Easily taken deceptive. By lust. By desire. By influence. In Galatians chapter 1 and verse 3. Would you read it with me? Grace to you and peace from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself for our sins, that he what? Might. That word might means that you must cooperate. Deliver us from this what? Present evil age. Hmm. And who is the God of this age? Satan. According to the will of our God and Father, to him be glory forever and ever. Let's continue. I marvel that you are turning away so soon from him who called you in the grace of Christ to a different gospel. He was warning him. This was a letter from Paul to the church in Galatia. He was warning him. He said, I can't believe you're turning away from the truth. Which is not another, but there are some who trouble you. It's a different gospel. And want to trouble you and want to pervert the gospel of Christ. But even if we, are, if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than that which we have preached to you, let him be what? Accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone preaches any other gospel to you than what you have received, let him be what? Accursed. So in other words, anything else, that's where the word says, many will fall from the faith, taking heed of deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Why would that person become a curse? Because he's agreeing with a doctrine of demons. You want to go a little further? 
For do I now persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men? For if I still please men, I would not be a bondservant of Christ. But I make known to you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but it came through revelation of Jesus Christ. So in other words, Paul, who wrote many of these epistles as an apostle, opened, starting churches in fellowships. He, you know, he, people look at it as starting churches. Paul wasn't out starting churches. He was just overseeing groups of pe people. Does everybody get that? That were follow, uh, followers of Jesus Christ. And, and the follow you and I are the church. One building's not a church. This ain't a church. We're just gathering together as the church. Amen? And this wouldn't be anything unless God's children came in. <laughs> so we see here that there's a present evil age. Hmm. Without cooperation, we cannot overcome. And it's cooperation with the living Christ, the anointing, or we'll be easily deceived. I'm going to go to Galatians 3 for a minute. Galatians chapter 3 and verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it together. Oh, oh foolish Galatians. Oh, dummy Galatians. Who has what? Bewitched you. He has deceived you. He has caused you to become a fool. You got to understand this. What did Paul just call them? Fools. He said, oh, foolish Galatians. You fools. What's the matter with you? Who has bewitched you? You that, that you should what? Not obey the truth. Before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. In other words, they knew the truth. But they accepted the voice of the stranger and became fools. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the spirit by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? They became religious. Are you so foolish, man? He really rebuking them. Having begun in the spirit, are you now being perfect, made perfect by the what? Flesh. Flesh. See, they, they walked away from the relationship in the spirit and began to do works. Does everybody get it? And actually, their works, because of walking away from the spirit, led them to lust, selfish desires. Have you suffered so many things in vain, if indeed it was in vain? Therefore, he who supplies the Spirit to you and works miracles among you, does he do it by the works of the law or by hearing of faith? Just as Abraham believed God, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Therefore, know that only those who are of faith are sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith preached the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying in you, all nations shall be what? Blessed. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. For as many as are the works of the law are under the curse. For it is written, curses everyone who does not continue in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no one is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Yet the law is not faith, but the man who does them shall live by them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, curses everyone who hangs on the tree, that the blessing of Abraham might, might, what's might mean? Cooperation might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So do you understand that without the Spirit of the living God, the Holy Spirit, see, this is where people fall into religion. They read their Bible, read their Bible, read their Bible, read their Bible. And they can quote scriptures. They can quote the page numbers. They can, even the devil knows the Bible from cover to back. But they have not made the Word of God 
the Word of God. They made it a word of a book. And only through the Spirit of God can you see Jesus as the living Word. Only He can give you the eyes to see Jesus speaking to you. See, you should see Jesus speaking to you when you read the Word of God. He's speaking to you face to face. Right there. So if He's speaking to you, and you turn around and let Him speak to the demons, because they're going to see Him in you. Has everybody got it? But again, that takes what? Cooperation. Cooperation. All glory. In 1 John chapter 4. First John chapter 4. Hallelujah. The, a, the God of this age. We need to get copies of these and give them to our neighbors. And, Again, most people don't even realize. They just live their life because it's been traditionally handed down. I mean, you know, I, I, I was deceived my whole life. My parents were deceived. Their parents were deceived. Actually, I didn't know. My, my grandmother, she spoke Italian, so I could never understand her anyways. I, I, my mother finally told me that she got baptized in the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues. She was probably praying tongues over me. And I thought she was speaking in Italian. <laughs> Hallelujah. <clears throat> Apparently she knew the truth somewhere along the line, but it didn't get passed on to her kids because they were all deceived. They thought she was nuts. People think you're nuts too. First John chapter 4 and verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but what? Test the spirits where they're there of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in this flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of what? Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who he knows God, what? Hears us. He who knows God. So if you are in right position with God, has everybody got it? People will hear you that are in right position with God. But if you're not in right position of God, people will not hear you. And those who are not in right position of God won't hear you either. They'll just think everything's going to be okay. You know, a lot of people use the scripture, well, all things work to the good to so those who love the Lord. Well, loving the Lord says you obey. Dummy, you obey. If you love me, you'll obey me, he says. Why well, want to go through everything to work to the good? It ain't going to work to the good. The only things that work to the good are those who love the Lord. <laughs> because they've made a mistake and things are going to work to the good. Amen? But they're not deliberately saying, I got it. I'm all right. That's not what it is. You're a fool if you do that. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's where people cannot trust God. They can only trust themselves. When you and I trust ourselves, we become fools. When our agenda is before God's agenda, we become fools. Amen? Amen? Is everybody okay? Ooh, yeah. Let's go a little further. Verse 5, they are of the world, therefore they speak of the world as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God, he who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of stupidity. I mean error. Fool. Spirit of fool. Beloved, let us one, love one another, for love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows 
God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. So we see the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. And the spirit of error is what's in fools. It's a deceptive spirit. Amen? <clears throat> what it begins to be happen, too, is people are led and they're in deception or looking for false fulfillment entering fool's paradise. Proverbs 1. Proverbs chapter 1. Is everybody okay? Are you getting this? Praise God. Let's get it. Proverbs 1, verse 2. <clears throat> Is everybody there? To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity, to give prudence to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and increase in learning. A wise man will what? Will hear and what? Increase in learning. See, there's a difference between hearing and listening. A lot of people listen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh God, yeah. But one who hears puts it to practice. Because we believe, we receive, and we execute. We put it to practice. A wise man will hear an increase in learning. A man of understanding will attain wise counsel. Verse 6. To understand a proverb and ignorant, the words wise and riddles. Verse 7. Are you ready? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. But what? Fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of your father. Do not forsake the law of your mother, for they will be graceful. They will be a what? Graceful ornament on your head and chains around your neck. Fools despise godly wisdom and instruction. Wisdom, of course, is from the Spirit of God. It's from the Holy Spirit. There are seven attributes. One of them is the Spirit of wisdom. Calls us. Calls us. It's always calling us. Come and get more. Come and get more. Come and get more. Ask for more. Stay, stay thirsty and hungry for more. Why? Because he's always trying to get us. We must stay in a place of increase, increase, increase. Has everybody got it? Oh, why? Listen, he calls us for more, more knowledge, more understanding, to maintain an area of increase, to stay ahead of the demonic plans of the enemy. Remember, the word says that he's trying to trick you up every single day. Every single day, he's trying to set a trap for you. Proverbs 3. Verse 31. Proverbs 3, verse 31. Somebody got do not envy the oppressor and choose none of his ways. For the perverse person is an abomination to the Lord. But his secret counsel is with the upright. With the upright. Right standing. Amen. The curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked. But he blesses the home of the just. Surely he scorns the scornful. But he gives grace to the humble. The wise shall inherit glory but shame shall be the legacy of fools. What kind of legacy you want to leave behind? Oh, hallelujah. Shame is a legacy of fools because they will not humble and turn. Remember, in all of these things is what we talked about, a fool state of being where there's deception and, and, and misleading and, and delusion and confusion, all kinds of these all of these things are influenced by the enemy. There are three categories that the enemy uses. Very simple. Lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, and pride of life. That's what the Lord constantly warns us about. Those are the areas that he will influence to manifest, to become a fool. Proverbs 12. song always comes to mind. I don't know if you remember. Everybody plays the fool sometimes. 
There's no exception to the rule. <laughs> Yow! <laughs> Praise God. Yeah, that comes to me every time I make a mistake. <laughs> Snap, man. Proverbs 12, is everybody there? Verse 15. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes. Oh, snap it. Amen. But he who heeds, heeds counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is known at once. But a prudent man covers shame. Now, you can usually tell somebody in the area of deception, you just talk to them or, you know. You'll, you'll know. You'll know the fruit of stupidity. Amen. There's always fruits. Amen? Has everybody got it? Deception. You'll know something to that degree. Proverbs 13. In verse 20. Speak it with me. He who walks with the wise men will be what? Oh, well, Hello. So you don't want to hang out with dummies. And I mean spiritual dummies. Amen. You want to walk with those and hang out with those who are hungry and thirsty for God. Remember associations bring impartations. You know when I was when I first became a Christian. Which I didn't even know what one was. But anyways when I became a believer. I hung around with people that were. Mature. Of course, I didn't know anything. You know, I mean, I, the, I, these every day, I hung around people that were thirsty and hungry for God. They were people of prayer. They were people of faith. I was brought up with. They were elders, older, much older than myself. But I was so thirsty and hungry. I wanted to learn more. I wanted to learn more. I began to outgrow them. Not because of pride or arrogance because that was their desire to get me to outgrow them. That is my desire for our students and disciples that they outgrow us. Amen. That they stay thirsty and hungry and go kick butt. Amen. That they become more bolder, Amen. fearless. Amen. Carry the example so that when they show up in a place they, people see Jesus. Demons see Jesus. They know. Remember the apostles, when they came out and hung around with other people, they said, man, those dudes were with the Lord. They knew that they were sons of God. Amen. They knew. Hallelujah. Proverbs 13. Did I say that already? Amen. Verse 20. He who walks with the wise men shall be what? Wise. But the companion of fools will be what? Destroyed. Who you be hanging with? That's why the Lord says, do not be unevenly yoked with idiots. Morons. If you're a Christian, you hang with Christians. Christ-like. That's what Christian means. It's not a religious type of thing. It's somebody that's thirsty and hungry for God. Other than that, they're thirsty and hungry for the devil. It's either one or the other. There's no in between. Even a good person that doesn't know Christ is a servant of the devil. Amen. Until that person is pulled out, unplugged from the world. Why? Because that person will turn on you at any moment. His influence is still from beneath, not from above. Everybody got it. Ooh, Romans 1. Companion of fools will destroy you. Romans chapter 1. Well, who's manipulating these idiots? The God of this age. Amen. Remember, the word says that the wisdom from beneath is what? Demonic and sensual. But the word wisdom from above is peace. Peace. Romans chapter 1, verse 18. 
Oh, glory. You know, many times you're going to ask somebody, you know Jesus? They say, yeah. They really don't know him. They just heard of him. Because if they got a cigarette, a cigar, a bottle of booze, or some kind of whatever in their hands, you know, if they're producing the perverse mouth or unrighteousness or rebellious or angry or hatred or the fruits of the flesh, they don't know Jesus. Yeah, I know Jesus. You might know of him. You might have got a letter from him and said, repent. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> might, might have visited you in a dream and said, yo, homie, turn it around, brother. Let's come on. <laughs> you want to hell? Daddy never says it that way. We do. <laughs> Romans 1, verse 18. Let's speak it. For the what? The, the what? Wrath. The wrath. Now, wait a minute. I want you to go back to Revelation 12. You don't, you don't have to go back there. Just remember. What did it say? That the devil has come down because, is a short time because of his wrath. Now, I want you to know that God uses devil as a whip. Has everybody got this? That's why it says, for the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Who's going to use? Amen. Mr. Wrath himself. Mr. Rebellious. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who oppress the truth in unrighteousness because what may be known of God is manifested in them for God has shown it to them for since the creation of the world his invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and Godhead so that all mankind is without excuse wow you can't get before God and do butt ministry but, 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 it's over. It says, because although they knew God, they did not what? Glorify him as God, nor were thankful, but became futile in their thoughts, and their what? Foolish hearts were what? Darkened. They became fools. Fools. Because they didn't love truth, did they? They rejected it. They were singing Frank Sinatra's old song, I Did It My Way. Some of you don't know that one. But <laughs> Verse 22. Professing to be what? Wow. Wise, they became fools and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man and birds and four-footed animals and creeping things. Therefore, God has also given them up to uncleanness in what? The lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves who exchanged the what? Truth of God for the lie and worshiped and served the creature or creation rather than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. Now, we're going to go a little bit further here because this is where we are at right now in this world. Verse uh, uh, 24, I mean uh, 26, is everybody there? For this reason God gave them up to what? Vile passions. What's vile passions? Perverse. For even their women exchanged the natural use of what is against nature. Look at this. Likewise also the men leaving the natural use of a woman. Burned in their lust for one another. Men with men. Women with women. Committing what is shameful and receiving themselves the penalty of their error which was due. Again, they became fools. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge or the, retain truth in their knowledge, God gave them over to the base mind to do those things which are not fitting. In other words, he let them go. He let the evil take them over.
because they rejected truth. Even though that they knew he existed, they let them go. He let them go. We are in this state of being right now in this country and in this world. There's got to be an awakening. There's got to be an awakening for people to come out of the deception and the depths of darkness so that they are, do not die as fools, but they live an honorable and leave an honorable legacy of death. Look at verse 29. Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters. They're haters of God. Even though that they say, I know Jesus, they're still haters of God. Why? Because they're not following Him. But I'm a good person. They're still haters if you're not following Him. Backbiters, haters of God. Look at violent, proud, boasters inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, they know God, they know he exists, they know what's what, but they're outright rebellion and rejecting because of the influence. That those who practice such things are deserving of what? Death. They will die. Not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. Man, that's incredible. And there are people that even approve of it. Amen. You and I cannot approve of abortion or same-sex marriage. We cannot approve of things that harm people. We can't approve it. We cannot approve of man's will. We can't approve it. Why? Because so, you and I are the only, we're, we're the only thing that you and I are to approve of what pleases him. What pleases you, Lord, is what I approve of. Anything else, no way. Because I'm not going to become a fool. Amen. Amen. Has everybody got this? Amen. This is where we are right now in this country and in this world. We're seeing it all over. No righteousness. But again, there is an awakening that's happening, but many are being taken out. Righteousness. What is righteousness? I'm going to share. One who is upright, conforming to the divine will and purpose, thoughts, and actions of God Almighty. Upright. In other words, you know that you're upright. Why? Because you're putting his will before yours. His desires before yours. His life before yours. Why? Listen, when pe people are thinking, oh, gosh, I don't know if I can do it. You can't. You can't. And I can't do all these, right? You can't. That's why you need to depend on him. That's why he gave me and you the power of Christ. He gave me and you the word. Listen, the disciples didn't even have the word. But again, so many people are falling in love with a book instead of the person. And it causes a lot of problems. There's time, look at people, I read my word every day. How about talk to your dad every day? Does everybody get this? Man, I was doing a class in jail one day, and I said, everybody put your Bibles away. They were like, whoa, all these religious dudes. Whoa. Man, I sleep with my Bible underneath my pillow. I said, what an idiot. <laughs> Don't you get a stiff neck? That's what happened. <laughs> Bunch of religious garbage. Jailhouse religion. They didn't know the voice of God. They can remember the only voice of God that was written was it, but they couldn't be led. Let me see. I don't know what to do. Let me go get my Bible. <laughs> Hello. Disciples didn't have a Bible. You know what they had? The living word. The Holy Spirit. The Spirit of Christ Jesus. They had the Spirit of Christ Jesus. 
You know, I think sometimes that the Spirit of God isn't so full released because people are more in love with the Word and the Bible than Him. There's not enough thirst and hunger for Him, the person. Man, when I first had my visitation from the Lord, I didn't want to read the Word at all. Why? I knew Him. What do I need the Word for? I don't want no book. I want the person. Come on, we can walk together, talk together, and everything. I got an emotional attachment with you. Yeah, man. I ain't cutting that loose. Everything else can get cut loose, but me and you, no way. And I don't have emotional attachment with this Bible. I got emotional attachment with the living word of God that speaks to me every day. I'm in love with him. He's in love with me. We have a love affair. That's walking in the spirit. Always keeping him before you. Enjoying his presence. He enjoys yours. Sometimes he'll tell you, what took you so long? Come on. I want to close it. First John chapter two. First John chapter two. Hallelujah. Verse fifteen. Don't love the world of fools or the things in it. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Hello. Does everybody got it? Everybody see it? Let's speak it. Next verse. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is what? Of the world. And the world is passing away in the lust of it, and the fools will pass away with it. But he who does the will of God abides forever. How vitally important that is. That means his will must be priority. Verse 18, little children, it is the last hour, and as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, and even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest. In other words, they became captive to deception. That none of them were of us. But you have an anointing from the Holy One and you what? You're supposed to know all things if you're in relationship with the Holy Spirit. I've not written you because you don't know the truth, but because you do know it. That no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar, but he who denies that Jesus is Christ. You know how you deny Jesus is Christ? You disobey him. It's that simple. You disobey him. But I know him. I love him. If you disobey him, you deny him. He is an antichrist. In other words, that antichrist spirit comes. He is an antichrist who denies the father and the son. Whoever denies the son does not have the father either. He who acknowledges the son has the father. Therefore, let that what? Abide, abide, abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. Now this is something about abide, abiding in Him. Those who live and remain in communion and obedience to His will and purpose abide in Him. So we abide in His Word, His presence, and fellowship. These things, and, and this is the promise, verse 25, that he has promised to us. What is it? Eternal. Eternal life. Wow. That's the end result. That's the reward. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to what? Deceive, Deceive you and bring you back into captivity and become a fool. But the anointing which you have received from him, if you're allowing it to lead you, to run you, to control you, to love you, to guide you. That anointing, the eternal presence and power of Christ, if you're allowing that, you do not need anyone to teach you. Why? Because the anointing teaches you. Remember, you're not hearing 
a man teach you. It's the anointing that teaches you. That's what's teaching all of us right now, the anointing. But the same anointing that teaches you concerning all things is true and is not a lie. Just as it is taught you, you will what? Abide, Abide in him. You will what? Abide in him. The age, the God of this age. We need to put him in his place. Amen. And stop allowing him to put you in your place. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. You are so good to us with revelation and impartations. Let it abide in each and every one today, Lord. Let the seed grow and bear fruit for your glory. Protect it with the blood of Jesus. And continue to bring revelation, impartation to each and every one here. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.